In this example, we have a function that represents the position of a printer for a given input command R of S. This expression here has all the dynamics of the printer, and this is the input command to the system. We know that in the time domain, we want the, the printer to reach a position of 1. That is the desired command, that it's the input given to the system in the time domain. The printer is supposed to go from the current position to 1. Before we go ahead and take the inverse Laplace transform of this function to find y of t, we need to figure out what this command represents in the frequency domain. If we graph this command as a function of time, and here we have r of t, what we are doing is that we are turning the system on. At time t equals to 0, we give a command to the system to go to 1, and you hold that command as time goes to infinity. So if you graph this function, it goes from 0 at time equals to 0, goes to 1, and the value of 1 is then held as the desired position for the printer. This clearly represents a step function whose magnitude is 1. The Laplace transform of r of t equals to 1 is r of s equals to 1 over s. This represents a step command in the frequency domain. Now that we have the value of r of s, we can replace r of s here and solve the inverse Laplace transform of the resulting function. Here I have the same function as in the exercise, except that I'm expressing the denominator as a function of its roots. y of s, which again is the time, is the frequency response of the printer, position is 6 times s plus 50 divided by r of s, we multiply this by r of s, is 1 over s. So we have s that comes from here, times s plus 10, s plus 30. And now we need to find the inverse Laplace of y of s. This clearly requires partial fraction decomposition, and you can write this as a over s plus b over s plus 10 plus c over s plus 30. We can now find a common denominator for this expression, find the system of three equations and solve for a, b, and c, as we did in exercise 12. I'm going to skip that process and just give the final values for a, b, and c. After solving for a, b, and c, we find that a is 1, b is negative 1.2, and c is 0 0.2. So I now rewrote the expression by replacing the coefficients with what, with what we found here. And you can finally find y of t, which is the inverse transform of y of s. y of t now is inverse of 1 over s is 1. Inverse of this 1.2 over s plus 10 is 1.2 times exponential of negative 10 t. And for the last part, you have 0 0.2 exponential of minus 30t. This is the time response of the printer when a step command is given in the form of r of t. Something interesting that we can notice once again is that the denominator of this function in the s domain has poles that are purely real numbers. It's 0, negative 10, and negative 30. There is no imaginary component in the poles, and according to the definition of Laplace transform, this should result in a time response that is purely exponential. And that's exactly what we see here. The printer goes to zero, from 0 to 1 following an exponential curve, and there is no sinusoidal component to that time response. And again, the same thing can be seen here. All poles of this function are real numbers.
Now that we have the time response, we can calculate the final value using the time response or even, again, using the final value theorem from the function y of s. If you take the limit of y of t when t tends to infinity, these two terms goes to, go to zero, we are left with one. If you didn't have the time response, we could look at the frequency expression and apply the final value theorem as the limit when s tends to zero of s times y of s, which is the limit of s tending to zero. This s cancels that s. Six times s plus 50 divided by s plus 10, s plus 30. When s tends to zero, this gives six times 50 divided by 300, which is again one. And this is the final value of the printer position.